This movie is powerful as shit. This is gonna be a good day. What is going on everyone? My name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and remember to click the bell so you miss out on any new content. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Judas and the Black Messiah and let me know if you think if it's Oscar worthy or do you think it's too late? Do you think that the late push that it's getting is too late? I don't know. It's gonna be tough. Judas and the Black Messiah stars Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, Jesse Plemons, Dominic Fishback, and a little little role by Martin Sheen. It was co-written and directed by Shaka King. The movie is about the story of Fred Hampton, chairman of the Illinois Black Panther Party, and his faithful betrayal by FBI informant William O'Neill. Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton of the Illinois Black Panther Party. This movie was, man, it was, it's like a crime saga, similar to The Departed, but this was about like real stuff. The Departed was about like, yeah, it was like one or two people that was like based on real people, but that whole movie is based, it's fiction. This, Judas and Black Messiah, this movie, this movie was about stuff that really happened. Like these are like historical events. It's a dramatization, yeah, but these are like, actual stuff. This is actual stuff that happened. I like what this one critic said. It said, Judas and the Black Messiah is on one level a historical drama. And on another, it's a movie very much of the moment. Because of everything that's been going on recently, this movie feels very relevant. Even though it took place in the 70s. It was tense. It was edgier seat. Entertaining, gripping, powerful, daring. Daring like, like Fred Hampton, the person. Not watered down at all. They don't sugarcoat shit in this movie and it it forces you to ask yourself you know who really started all this i'm not saying like cops or you know people i'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying that what i'm saying is it, it just it makes you wonder what exactly is going on here but at the same time it's not like one side is portrayed as completely innocent and vice versa it's not so black and white you no know, pun intended. Daniel Kaluuya as Fred Hampton says some really radical stuff. But at the same time, it's like, what do you expect? What the hell do you expect? If you keep pushing somebody and you keep pushing people and you keep pushing and pushing and pushing, eventually they're going to push back. Hell, even Jesus lost his cool and flipped out that, uh, you know, that one time at the, um, at the, uh, the temple, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, he was flipping out with the gold and he was flipping tables and chairs and stuff and you know doves flying everywhere or something like that right good old jc through a through a temple tantrum <laughs> the old uh what was it the old uh, den of thieves right right that's what the bible said right the old den of thieves or something like that right i don't know, I don't know. anyway the fact that you even see fred hampton and some people in the film say some really radical stuff Kudos to the writers and the director for being, or at least trying to be transparent and trying to make an honest film and not being so one-sided. One question you'll ask yourself and it made me ask myself while I was watching, I was like, where was all this history in school? <laughs> Why aren't we being taught any of this stuff? Like, I mean, I knew about the Black Panthers, I did, but I didn't know what happened to Fred Hampton. I mean, that's some, that's some shit. Like, where? Why, why, why weren't we taught this? We weren't taught shit. It makes you wonder like, hmm, hmm. I wonder why. Why, people? This movie is a portrait of Fred Hampton and the complexities of who he was and the situations he was put in. But the movie also does that with William O'Neill and so many other people in the movie, whether it's O'Neill or Jesse Plemons' character, the FBI agent, a majority of the portrayals in this movie seem to be a little more complex and not so one-dimensional. Daniel Kaluuya is amazing in this movie. He gives such a powerful performance. I'm not kidding when I say Daniel Kaluuya is in the zone man he is locked in it's in the eyes he look in the eyes especially when he's doing his speeches like you can see like his just the passion like his, his body language his voice I am I am a revolutionary. I am I am a revolutionary. 
I mean, he was getting me riled up. I was watching movies, sitting there like, yeah, yeah. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder freedom. If this shit, I love the people too. F this shit. Come on, Boogie, let's burn this motherfucker down. I had to, you know, had to wind down after watching it. I was watching movies, but I had to go to bed. I was just, I couldn't sleep. I was all riled up. I was like, whoo, 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 At the same time, Kaluuya shows such great range because we get to see a sensitive side to Fred Hampton. And Kaluuya does such a good job of balancing that out. So it doesn't seem forced or not genuine. Lakeith Stanfield is excellent too. I mean, Lakeith Stanfield is going Lakeith Stanfield. The dude's just a good actor. He shows a vulnerable side and a, like a human side to the person that he's playing. There's times where he really pisses you off. I mean, you're watching it, you're just like, you motherfucker. And he just makes you so angry. But then there's times where you can see the guilt and you can see he's really conflicted and you can start to understand the position that he's being put in. Dominique Fishback was a revelation. I mean, I was really impressed. I haven't seen her in anything before. This is the first time I'm seeing her. And uh, I was uh, pretty impressed. She brought out a different side of Kaluuya's portrayal of Fred Hampton. It was a nice balance. But at the same time, she could be really intense. There's this one scene in particular where the camera is just a close-up shot focused on her face. And just look at her eyes. Just You know what scene I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. It's it's all in the eyes. She was outstanding in that scene, and in a couple of scenes. Keep an eye out for her. She was good. Jesse Clemens did a good job too. The dude's just, I mean, he just keeps pumping out good performances. And his character was a, a little more complex than we usually get from your typical FBI agent in a movie like this, whatever, but that was refreshing to see. And it gives you the idea that all these people are in really tough situations and that there are more powerful forces at work here. I really like the score in this movie too. The music selection was perfect, it was really good, but the score itself was just very, it was different. It was like this light jazz sort of like thing going on, but it was just like like a bass. It was tense and these certain scenes it was just like doom, 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 doom. I was like, what? this is cool. I don't know what this is, but it's pretty fucking cool. I really liked the cinematography by Sean Bobbitt. It was gritty and intense. It was like guerrilla style. Like it felt like you were just in there. The scene where Fred Hampton, you'll see it in the trailer. If you look at the trailer, you can see it. He's walking up the steps to speak to the crowd and the church. It's like all in one take. I love how that was shot. The writing was really good too. It's thrilling and entertaining, yet it's still thought-provoking. This movie made you think. And from beginning to end, you're just, your eyes are glued to the screen. It's a well-directed film. I'm interested to see which project Shaka King takes on next because this is not an easy film to do. And he nailed it. So is it worthy of an Oscar nomination? Hell, motherfucker. I mean, yes, sir, Dean Kane, sir. Hell yeah, absolutely. Kaluuya should win for Best Supporting Actor. He's head and shoulders above everyone else in the category. He's practically a co-lead. They have right now in the categories, Lakeith Stanfield as the main starring actor, and they have Dan Kaluuya as a supporting actor, but they're essentially co-leads. Could get an editing nomination, could get a cinematography nomination, directing in Best Picture. It should, it absolutely should, but I just don't, I don't know. It didn't pick up a lot of momentum at the Globes and Sags, so, I mean, it's making a late push, but I just, I hope it's not too late of a push because it should be nominated. There's no reason why it shouldn't be nominated. It's similar to The Trial of Chicago 7. Same time period and everything, though Trial is probably more accessible. Judas is a better movie. Movies like Trial and Judas, they tend to get nominated. The only thing that separates Judas is that Judas is more daring and really isn't afraid to push buttons. It's dark. It's gritty, but it's still complex. And there's like a love story in there too. It checks off all the boxes. I give Judas and the Black Messiah a four and a half, a high four and a half out of five stars. Like a legit 4.75 out of five. Seriously, this is a excellent movie. So if you have not seen it, go see it. If you like my take on Judas and the Black Messiah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all China updates and in between time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.